Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 30th December 2017. I am Sagan Nandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit, a company based in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. If you are interested to know more about me, the company Superior Profit, and more importantly, how it can help in your trading, you may visit the website superiorprofit.co and click on the about menu. Before we begin, we go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on superior profits trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As we do in every market roundup, we look at key commodities. These tend to impact related stocks. We look at oil and gold using technical charts. Rising tide lifts all boats. We study broad market so that we can identify the underlying tide. We will do that using market breadth of NASDAQ and NYSE and technical analysis of the four broad market ETFs. If we trade with industry rotation strength aligned to the trade, that gives additional edges to the trade. We study that using QH industry scorecard and heat map. Along the way, we may review some of the examples from Q forum and as always look for potential trades for the coming week. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let's move to live system. We are looking at US oil using weekly backdrop chart on the left and daily hop on chart on the right. Together we call this at a glance template. This is the template that helps us decide if there is an optimal buy point or short point at the right edge of the chart. And usually we can decide that in less than one minute. Let me change the template to the advanced hop on template that will show the watermark support and resistance lines in the daily chart. In last week's market roundup, I had mentioned that price was moving somewhat sideways with the lows and the highs in the daily chart at approximately same level. And I had mentioned that until price breaks above this sideways range, it may not be safe to take any trend following trade in US oil. That breakout took place this way. The weekly backdrop candle color has turned cyan, that is bullish. However, in the daily chart, price is already overbought. It is very close to the upper boundary lines and it is overbought as shown by the dot appearing on Friday's candle. As it is overbought, we are not going to try any long trade in US oil right now. Instead, if it comes down a little bit, probably comes to the memory that is the automatically drawn smart trend lines and goes up from there, that will give us a low risk trend following go with flow long opportunity. Stop could be placed just below that swing low and we could book profit once the risk distance is covered 
or once the upper boundary line is hit. We may wait for such a low risk entry point and not take any trade right now. We are now looking at GLD, the gold ETF, using the same at a glance template. In the weekly chart, gold reversed 3 weeks ago. That weekly candle color was still magenta, that is bearish, though the shape was bullish. It had both a lower tail as well as hollow body. From there, GLD went up. The candle color has now turned cyan, that is bullish in the weekly chart. In the daily chart, it had hit and went below the lower boundary lines, displayed a bull release signal and went up straight from there to hit the upper boundary and beyond that. Such moves where an instrument goes straight from lower boundary to upper boundary, we call these moves wild moves. They happen suddenly without any pullback in the middle and they don't give us an easy low risk buy opportunity. At the right edge, just like was true for US oil, gold is also overbought and it is above upper boundary. That is too overextended for us to take any swing long trade. We may wait for gold to pull back and come back up again, thereby giving us a low risk trend following go with for a long opportunity. Though we couldn't take any swing long trade in gold, we could take that in a gold miner that we discussed in earlier market roundups. Let's have a look at that stock. The stock was Yamana Gold AUY. I had discussed this stock in weekly market roundup when price came to this candle. It tried to go below the watermark support level but reversed on this yellow candle that also displayed the cyan bull release signal. While this was happening in the weekly chart, price came to the memory support line and reversed from there. In daily chart, this support level was the same price where a bullish headwind reversal signal had come earlier and price went up from there. As we have discussed before, if a bullish headwind moves price up, then when price comes back to that same level, there may be still some buying left and in this case the price move also created a false downside breakout that is price appeared to go below the watermark support level that was created by the bullish headwind signal but immediately reversed and went up. Such false breakouts tend to pull the last minute short traders and then stop them out as it reverses. So we could take a long trade right when the reversal happened and as GLD went up, AUY also went up from there, went much further than the upper boundary line. I had taken a long position in AUY. At the right edge over last few days, I observed that it came to the memory resistance line in daily and also a much longer term memory resistance line in weekly. Over Thursday and Friday, the daily traffic light candle color turned yellow, neutral. Watching that, I decided to book my profit in AUI at this point. If the stock 
pulls back little bit comes to value area and goes up from there then I may consider taking another long trade that would be a trend following go with flow long trade opportunity and I will be happy to take that if the gold mining industry as seen from QH is strengthening at that time. After looking at the commodities, let us look at market breadth. Every week we study market breadth using NASDAQ composite index and NYSE composite index weekly charts. As this analysis is using broad indices and weekly charts, it is to be used only for long term investing decisions not for swing trading and certainly not for day trading. The candle charts show that both NASDAQ and NYSE are in strong uptrend over longer term that is weekly charts. Last week there was a bearish headwind signal in NASDAQ that seemed to be effective so far. NASDAQ declined a little bit this week. NYAC didn't have any bearish headwind last week. In fact last week it created a new all-time high and this week it again created another new all-time high. However, the weekly candle shape is bearish with upper tail the traffic light candle color is bullish. So there is mixed signal in the NYSC candle chart. Other than the candle charts, we also study the three pairs of internals that is new high low, advanced decline and up down volume for both NASDAQ and NYSC. This week something interesting happened the new high low for both NASDAQ and NYSE went up from previous week and both closed positive. Whereas advanced decline for NASDAQ and NYSE as well as up down volume for NASDAQ and NYSE decline. All these four internal studies ended negative and all four of them went below the previous peaks, the trend line that was drawn using previous peaks. That paints a bearish picture of the internals for this specific week. And overall, the internals continued to be weak for many weeks though the price was making new all-time highs the internals were mostly not able to make new highs so in summary we may conclude that the indices themselves are clearly in uptrend it will take a while for them to be in downtrend because we are looking at longer term weekly charts the internals continue to be weak not able to surpass previous peaks and for this specific week overall the internals are weak. Let us see if this weakness at the right edge of the charts is reflected in broad market ETF studies as well. We are looking at SPY using Q at a glance template for two successive weeks the weekly backdrop candle color has turned neutral that is yellow and these weeks candle shape is bearish with upper tail. This is in line with the NYAC broad market index candle whose shape was also bearish. SPY daily chart had displayed multiple bearish headwind signals earlier. Price tried to go higher, however, 
it tilted down a little bit, especially on Friday. Looking from right edge, we see that SPY has started to move somewhat sideways. Of course, over longer term, it is still having higher lows and higher highs. That is, technically, it is in uptrend. We continue to be cautious on SPY because of multiple bearish headwind signals and the fact that at least for this week, it couldn't go up any further. From the weekly candle, we can see that it closed below last week's close. We can also infer that instantly from the weekly activity bar color that is red, which shows that this week SPY closed lower. That is different from the broad NYSE index, which actually closed higher. However, both these candles the SPY as well as the NYSE broad market weekly candles have bearish shape. So it is better to be cautious. Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF, DIA, it turned yellow this week in the weekly chart. It also closed lower relative to last week. We can see that from the activity bar changing color to red. Here also we had multiple bearish headwind signals in the daily chart and looking from the right hand side it is moving sideways. Dia chart looks very similar to SPY and it is good to be cautious at the right edge of the chart. QQQ also using Q at a glance template here the bearish headwind had come in the weekly chart one week ago. Remember there was a bearish headwind in the NASDAQ composite index as well. NASDAQ composite index dropped not a lot but somewhat and QQQ dropped as well. This is the first of the three ETFs that is SPY, DIA and QQQ where the weekly backdrop candle color has turned bearish, that is magenta. The shape is also bearish. In the daily chart, QQQ tried to go above the watermark resistance level. After that, it displayed a bear release signal and came down somewhat, closed below the same resistance level thereby creating a false upside breakout. Looking from the right hand side, the trend is not decisive. It has a memory support at the bottom, very close to Friday's closing price. And at the top, it has created a false breakout. So it is indecisive trend. We uh, not to take any long or short trade during these times. Russell 2000 ETF IWM this also displayed a bearish headwind signal in weekly several weeks ago. For three weeks the backdrop candle color was yellow neutral and this week backdrop candle color has turned bearish magenta. The shape is also bearish with long upper tail. Looking at the daily, it is moving inside narrow range, actually inside a triangle pattern formed by memory resistance and memory support. There is no clear trend, we need to wait until price moves either downside or upside and breaks the triangle. From the relative performance line, the white dotted line that is tilting down, we can infer that small cap stocks that is IWM 
is weaker than broad market SPY. None of the ETFs have any valid long or short trade setup. SPY, QQQ, DIA are moving in uptrend. IWM sideways we can say. However, it is better to exercise caution because all the four ETFs has displayed bearish headwind signal and the up move has at least stalled for this week. It couldn't go up higher. Let's see if this pattern that is displayed by the broad market breadth and the market ETFs are reflected in the sector industry analysis as well. Sector performance. Every week we study 11 economic sectors across three review periods. The red bar represents performance of this week. Green bar performance of one week prior to the red bar and blue bar performance of two weeks prior to the green bar. Together they constitute four weeks or about one month of performance. Any bar coming to the right of the zero line means the sector went up. Any bar coming to the left of the zero line indicates the sector went down. Two weeks ago, if you were watching these market roundups regularly, you remember that sector breadth was lopsided to the upside. That is, these red bars were much more to the right side than to the left side. Last week it was more balanced. So from being lopsided to the upside, it became balanced and this week it has turned weaker. Six sectors went up, five went down and the increases were feeble relative to the drops. Real estate is the only sector that increased significantly. Looking at the weekly performance, we still see that more sectors went up than went down. This seems to paint a slightly bullish picture, largely balanced you can say. However, if we look at Friday's performance, the last trading day of the year, that was clearly bearish in terms of sector breadth. Out of 11 sectors, 10 declined. One was unchanged. This was certainly bearish. Now real estate was the best performer. In last market roundup, I discussed the possibility of this sector turning around from the very bottom. That seems to be taking place. Industry rotation heat map once again hinted about what was about to happen. The probable turnaround is clear from the QH industry heat map. We we'll look at this heat map shortly. It didn't only help us identify the turnaround of real estate from the bottom, it also warned us about possible decline in consumer discretionary. For last two weeks, though consumer discretionary was going up, it ended positive. I explained the warning signs hidden inside the industry pace scores, which showed that some of the industries inside consumer discretionary were decelerating. These warnings came to life as now the sector has declined in spite of potential extra disposable income from the new tax laws. Information technology is the worst performer. 
for several weeks in this market roundups i had warned against opening new buy position in this sector that was also based on the heat map information the best time to buy in this sector had long passed so it was already time to either book profit or at least protect profit using stop orders if information technology continues to go down there may be some very profitable shorting the top opportunities utilities it's a defensive sector and it went up with fastest pace acceleration you may look out for a potential reversal in this sector let's have a look at these sectors real estate consumer discretionary information technology and utilities using QH sector industry heat map every time we open QH it analyzes the 11 economic sectors and more than 170 industries across 12 monthly periods and then more frequently over recent periods 10 days 5 days 2 days and 1 day in real time it assigns a score a large number to the best performing sector or industry and a small number to the worst performing item also applies a heat map cyan to the strongest one magenta to the weakest one and a color gradient to all the ones in between the result is a heat map and scoring table that instantly tells us which sector or industry is strong and equally importantly which ones are strengthening or weakening let's focus on the sectors the primary review period for deciding any entry both for long term investing as well as swing trading is the 5 days period if we sort it using score then we see that real estate is now the best performing sector looking back we can see that it is very nicely and gradually strengthening changing color from magenta to cyan this is the time to look for turn around long opportunities in fundamentally strong stocks in real estate sector utility is also interesting it jumped score from the worst performing score of 1 over 10 days to the second best score of 10 over 5 days and in terms of acceleration over last 5 days it is the fastest accelerating sector that's why i mentioned that it may be worth looking for long opportunities in utilities right now on the other hand information technology was the best performer we can just look at the color cyan color means strong it was best performer strong for many months but recently it is declining in score rapidly over this week it was the worst performer this gradual color transition started several weeks ago that is what led me to warn that the best time to take long is over and it was good idea to at least protect profit using stop from sector analysis we now drill down to the industries the best performing industries of this week three materials and two energy industries are among the best performing industries three materials industries with best performance are aluminum construction material and diversified metals and mining and two energy industries among best performers these are coal and consumable fuels and oil and gas drilling 
water utilities is something that we may analyze further. We just saw that utilities sector accelerated with fast pace, fastest pace actually. And inside that sector, water utilities became one of the best performers. It was already one of the strongest among utilities peers. Its score never turned much bearish while its peers turned down. We can see that from industry rotation heat map. Because it had already been strong and didn't dip much, there may not be any value buy opportunity here. This is confirmed by drill down and looking up the stock charts. Let's use key wedge to drill down from the utility sector into the underlying industries and see how the heat map tells us that the best opportunities by opportunities in water utilities are already behind us. We are looking at the sectors. We can put our cursor on utilities, click on the get components button that will populate all the utilities industries only in the industry analysis tab. Here we can see that several utilities industries were magenta earlier and turned cyan now. So these like electric utilities, gas utilities and multi utilities may give us optimal buy opportunities fundamentally strong stocks that are starting to go up just as the industries are also turning from magenta to cyan. If you look at electric utilities, its score over 10 days period was worst possible score of 1 and this week the score jumped a lot to 109. That showed the acceleration to be very strong in the pace column. And in fact, gas utilities has the best acceleration. We came here to study water utilities. We can see that water utilities as an industry was strong throughout. It never dipped much. From this, we may conclude that the best opportunities to buy in water utilities are already passed long past, maybe somewhere here, because it had been strong for many months now. As a sector, utilities is turning around and the best buy opportunities may be in electric utilities, gas utilities and multi utilities. You may in fact drill down from water utilities into its stock by clicking the components button again. I have already done that and from the stocks charts, I confirm that there are no value opportunities right now in water utilities. That's how we can start from sector, drill down to industries and then finally to stocks to decide optimal buy opportunities. What about retail rates? In the last market roundup, the recording is available in YouTube channel, I had discussed retail rates to be a possible turnaround candidate. This week it became one of the best performers. And if we drill down we see all the 28 stocks in this industry went up. Tanger Factory Outlet SKT went up after giving a trend following setup on Tuesday. Here once again, the bullish headwind signal that was on 7th November caught the exact very bottom of the stock. That is why whenever a headwind signal appears, if it is a bullish headwind, we are careful not to short the stock. And if a bearish headwind appears, we are careful not to immediately jump onto a new long position. Let's look at retail rates industry and drill down to its components to see that indeed all the 28 stocks went up this week. 
and we could somewhat predict that move one week earlier, much before other traders. We can again start from sector analysis, drill down into real estate. Let's sort the real estate industries along the primary five days period. We see retail rates is one that was weak earlier, magenta and turning cyan now. It is also holding on to the cyan color over two days period and over one day, Friday. We can click the get components button. QH will go to the universe that is Thomson Reuters and retrieve the stocks. Okay, it has found 31 stocks. So it finds either 28 or 31 based on our selection criteria that is in the score tab here I am trying to find stocks with minimum market cap of 1 million US dollar in this case minimum closing price 1 dollar minimum volume 1k that volume may be too low let's try to find stocks with minimum closing price of 3 dollar and let's say minimum 100k shares traded per day on average We can try to retrieve stocks again using the updated parameters. QH will go to Thomson Reuters and see this time it has picked 28 stocks. We can click the calculator button to get the data on all these 28 stocks and calculate vital statistics. The calculation is complete. To further analyze in much more detail, we can click on the investigate button. Go to vital analysis tab. It has multiple panels with detailed information. Going to the performance panel, we see that over 5 days, that is our primary interest period, 28 of the 28 stocks ended in the positive, no stock ended in the negative. So this was strong performance from this real estate industry and we already identified this industry to be a potential turnaround candidate one week earlier. That is the predictive power of the QH sector and industry analyst. Let's have a look at this stock SKT. This is Tanger Outlet SKT using at a glance template. In the daily chart, it had already created higher high and higher low. On this candle, it gave us a bullish cyan color candle. That is, flow color was bullish. It turned up from the value area and that was meeting all the necessary conditions for a go with flow long trade setup. This was happening while the industry itself was going up. Therefore, we could take a very low risk long trade, swing trade, put stock just below recent low and profit target could be once the risk distance was covered or at the upper boundary. We can see that the risk distance was already covered by the high of Friday. So some profit could be booked and remaining position could be held using Q protection stop in a way that the entire trade is risk free from Friday onward. As the industry is continuing to be bullish, strengthening after long periods of weakness, it is better not to exit the full position. Partial profit can be booked and the remaining position can be held. If the industry continues to go up, it's likely that the stock will also go up and we will have a chance to let profit run. So we could be ready to take SKT based on last week's industry analysis and take the trade confidently when the optimal buy point was 
identify it using the cyan color candle. This week's best performing industry is coal and consumable fuels. It had gone up by 20% last week. This week it went up again by 6.5%. This industry is now having the best score for almost all the review periods from one day to one year and the best long opportunities have passed. You could easily identify the long opportunities long time ago when in key age the industry had turned around from magenta to cyan just like retail rates is turning around now. But it is too late probably to take long trades in this industry. Let's look at coal and consumable fuels on QH. We can filter for coal and consumable fuels and we can see that it is strong now for almost all the review periods, cyan, all throughout. So we can immediately infer that the best opportunities to take long has passed long time ago. Now it may be too late to try to enter long trades, at least bottom, bottom catching long trade opportunities. From best performing industries, we now switch to worst performing industries. Consumer discretionary weakness is evident from several of its industries becoming worst performers. These are education services, broadcasting, laser products and home furnishing retail. So four of the worst performers are in consumer discretionary. Using similar analysis, we had already projected that consumer discretionary was probably going to decline and that happened this week. Technology, hardware, storage and peripherals is also one of the worst performers. Weakening of this industry as seen on QEdge had resulted in a number of easy and profitable swing short trade opportunities in stocks that were also fundamentally weak, overvalued. These are three examples, computer peripheral stock Stratasys S -S -Y -S, dropped beautifully after reversing from memory resistance on 18th December. That reversal was accompanied by heavy activity, so this shot could be taken as a bounce short trade. Bounce short trades are those which come when a stock hits a support resistance line, memory line in this case, and reverses with high volume. Let's look at SSYS and see how it reverses from memory resistance. This is SSYS using at a glance template. In the daily chart, price tried to go up and hit precisely these memory resistance lines and dropped from there on this yellow candle. The up move and the immediate reversal both were accompanied by very high activity. We know that from the dots appearing on the activity bars. So we could take a shot at the close of this candle, put stop just above recent high and book profit once the risk distance was covered which has already happened by Friday. Often looking at the existence of memory support resistance, one can take a very low risk short trade in this case using real time chart. So instead of using daily chart as we are using here, we could draw this price level, the existence of memory resistance price level on 5 minute chart as price tried to go above and failed, came down, created a false upside breakout on 5 minute charts, we could take a shot right at that point. Our stop will be very narrow on 5 minute chart, just this small tail you can say. 
we could book profit partial profit at the end of the day and let profit run for all the remaining days giving us a extremely high reward risk ratio profitable short trade in fact i took a similar short trade in mastercard i'll try to show the trade before we end today's session we could take this short trade more confidently because we knew the industry was also weakening 3d systems ddd reversed from bearish headwind candle on same day 18 december let's look at ddd ddd had been declining for a while On this candle, it tried to go up but reversed, displayed a bearish headwind signal. So one could take a short trade at the close of this day, put stop just above recent high and book partial profit at least once the risk distance is covered. That has already happened by Friday. Once again, the headwind signal could catch the precise swing high. There was also another stock, computer storage stock, pure storage, PSTG, that dropped since last earnings on 29th November. And since then, it has given a series of possible trend following growth flow short trades. I will not go through PSTG now. However, let's look at this industry, technology, hardware, storage and peripherals, drill down to the stocks and see that actually these three stocks were also fundamentally overvalued. So we had a combination of all the forces in favor of the short trades. The industry was weak. Individually, these three stocks were fundamentally weak, overvalued. And technically, on Q charts, they had given bearish signals. Let's drill down into the industry stocks and assert that these stocks were in fact overvalued. We can go to the technology, hardware, storage and peripherals. We see that it was stronger earlier, cyan, but gradually weakening, turning magenta. This is the period where we had multiple short opportunities. We can drill down to the stocks retrieving the data from Thomson Reuters. It has found 15 stocks. We have updated the vital statistics and instantly from color coding we see DDD is magenta in relative valuation. So even now it is relatively overvalued. The same is true for pure storage PSTG magenta color in relative valuation and SSYS. So this is what we understand as 360 degrees analysis, 360 degrees trades, where we have industry's weakness, fundamental weakness and technical weakness, all favoring the trade. So from every angle, these were good short trades and all of them turned out to be pretty profitable. Marine industry pulled back and also decelerated fast. However, this industry was weak for a long time. Last week, it went up. This week, it declined. That may actually give some potential by the dip. By that dip, go with flow, long opportunities. And these are the two stocks we discussed last week. They were already starting to go up, CISPAN and KEX, Kidbicop. They were moving up but didn't give us a low risk entry point. Now that the industry has pulled back, next week if it strengthens again, if the industry strengthens again, SSW and KEX may actually give go with flow long trade opportunities. Let's look at these two stocks. SSW, C-SPAN using at a glance template. The weekly backdrop candle color is bullish, cyan. 
in daily chart it created a higher high broke out of the narrow sideways range and now it has pulled back if it goes up and gives us a cyan color candle in the daily chart then we could take it as a go with flow long signal put stop just below recent low and book profit at the next resistance line memory resistance and also the white direction line in this case if the industry continues to strengthen this will be very low risk long entry opportunity same for kex kidby cop also has bullish backdrop candle color also created higher high pull back little bit next week if it goes up gives us a cyan color candle it will give us a low risk buy point we'll take it more confidently if the marine industry is also going up that we can see from qh and we can see that in real time food retail is one of the worst performers Casey's General Stores (CASY) fell almost magically after displaying a bearish headwind. Difficult to believe how bearish headwind sometimes catches the very top. That signal came on 12th November. It was overvalued. That we can see from Q Vital fundamental analysis. And another stock, super value SVU. It has poor growth now. look out for short opportunity in both of these stocks let's at least look at cases cases was going up strongly in the weekly chart that was reflected in the daily chart on this candle q daily chart displayed a bearish headwind and almost magically it caught the very top yet another example why when a bearish headwind comes we are careful not to enter any new long trade and also protect profit in existing long positions it dropped significantly now it has pulled up little bit it is near value area weekly backdrop color is bearish the industry is also bearish it is actually one of the worst performers this week so if it goes down if the stock goes down and gives us a magenta flow color bearish candle that may give us a low risk short opportunity we could short somewhere here put stop just below recent high and book profit once the risk distance is covered or at the lower boundary or the next support line the memory support line in this case super value may give a similar short opportunity every week other than the best and worst performing industries we also study the accelerating industries which often tend to tell us what is going to happen next week on next two weeks we did that with real estate in previous market round up where we could anticipate that real estate is going to strengthen that indeed happened let's see what accelerated this way utilities as a sector accelerated we saw earlier that water utilities was strong for long time but that is not true for gas and multi utilities these two were weak and we can see that their score jumped significantly so we may look for turn around low risk long opportunities by identifying fundamentally strong stocks you could do that by drilling down using qh gas utilities has the best acceleration within the utility sector and this stock ugi cop ugi is the ticker symbol reversed from weekly and daily watermark support and from the level that displayed bullish headwind earlier using the strength of utilities sector and this specific industry 
you could already take a profitable long trade in UGI. Let's have a look at this stock. Let me change the template to advanced open template where we also have the watermark support levels. This is UGI using at a glance template. This week price came to the watermark support level. Displayed a bullish headwind reversed from there on Thursday and this happened while in the weekly chart price came precisely to the memory support line and created an indecisive candle that is a candle with both upper tail and lower tail. As the industry is turning around from the very bottom, it is expected that the stocks, at least some of them, will also be near a low point. Like UGI in this case, it created a double bottom in daily and gave a bullish headwind signal, possible reversal signal. Weekly is supported by memory support. Looking at that, one could take a long trade on Thursday would stop just below recent low just below the watermark level entry on Thursday's close and book profit in the value area by that time the risk distance will be covered and one could exit at least partial position of the long trade if the industry continues to strengthen it will be better to hold at least partial position However, use Q protection signal as trailing stop so that the entire trade is risk free from that point onward. Healthcare rates as the real estate sector went up from bottom, healthcare rates gained substantially. We can drill down using QA and we can find multiple optimal value stocks in this industry. They also pay at least some of them excellent dividend. So they could be taken as dividend play as well, giving low risk long term as well as swing trade buy opportunities. We have a Q site forum where we share these insights. It's a subscription based forum, very minimal monthly subscription. We already shared this insight in the forum, the QSite forum. Let's have a look at that post. For accessing QSite, we can go to our home page, superiorprofit.co, go to forum and QSite, where we share ideas using Q360 degrees analysis. If we go to USA Insight Forum, today we shared this idea. These three real estate stocks in the USA may be your best buy opportunities. How did we come to that conclusion? We first looked at the healthcare rates industry. It was magenta, weak for a long time, and just now, over five days, turned around, became cyan. And from base column, we see that it accelerated very fast. These are the times we start looking for potential long term as well as swing trade buy opportunities because we'll be able to catch probably the very bottom of some of the stocks. However, we would like the stocks to be fundamentally strong also. We can do that by drilling down. Once we drill down, into healthcare rates industry, we find these three stocks SBRA, MPW, and OHI. All three of them have great valuation, both relative valuation score and internal valuation score. All of them are cyan. And the dividend yield percentages are very high, ranging from about 7% to almost 10%. So these are the three stocks in an industry that is starting to turn around after long weakness. They are fundamentally strong in terms of valuation 
optimal value stocks pays a beautiful dividend. So we could look at the technical charts as the final step to locate low risk buy points. Here we are looking at SBRA, one of the three stocks. In the weekly chart, it is still dropping. Interestingly, this bearish headwind caught the very top beautifully. This bullish headwind in weekly chart also caught the low beautifully. Both gave very profitable swing long and here swing short opportunity. At the right edge, Price is still declining. The weekly candle color was bearish last week. This week the color has turned bullish, cyan, but the shape is bearish with long upper tail. So we are not going to take a long trade right now. I see there is a memory support line. So it will be nice if this stock were to hit the memory support, maybe even create a false downside breakout and reverse from there that could give us a very low risk entry opportunity. Interestingly, in the daily also, it has displayed a bullish headwind signal. Since then, it is moving sideways. However, there are multiple memory resistance lines. It is not in clear uptrend. So we may wait for it to break above the memory resistance, till down and go up again, giving us a low risk buy point here or another possibility could be if price comes down little bit breaks down below the watermark support but reverses from there creating a false downside breakout we could take a long just as price closes above the same watermark put stop below the recent low we could look for both these potential long setups what about the other two stocks This is OHI. This is more bullish than the last stock. Here the weekly candle color is bullish, cyan and also the shape is bullish. In daily it went up to the upper boundary, also hit the yellow direction line that was declining and came down, created a higher low. It has also displayed a memory support line Friday's candle shape is bearish so we will not take any long trade right now if price was to come back to the memory support and tilt back up from there that would give us a very low risk long entry opportunity the third stock is most bullish it is already starting to go up this is MPW it has created higher high, came down and on Thursday gave us a cyan color candle. That could be taken as a signal for low risk long entry opportunity. Stop could be just below the memory support line. The weekly candle color is still neutral, yellow. However, one could think about taking the long trade looking at the memory support line that is there both in weekly as well as daily and of course the fact that the industry itself healthcare rates is strengthening. So that was a post in the Q site forum. Regularly we share such ideas that people can use to investigate further and locate optimal buy and short opportunities in a timely fashion using 360 degrees analysis. Among the accelerating industries, a hoping 7 of 10 are actually in real estate. My last week analysis on possible turnaround of real estate sector was indeed timely and useful. We looked at healthcare rate stocks from the post of Q site you may drill down into the other real estate accelerating industries using QH to locate possible bottom buy opportunities. These are healthcare rates, industrial rates, residential rates. 
equity real estate investment trusts office rates specialized rates diversified rates a lot of rates went up that gives us more confidence to take long position in these industries however we also would like to take long only in fundamentally strong stocks and we can instantly identify those from q vital score lastly we look at the decelerating industries they often tend to be the worst performing industries in subsequent weeks i already mentioned about marine industries though it decelerated and performed poorly it may actually give by the deep opportunity we saw two stocks that may give such opportunities food retail was among worst performers this week and it also decelerated this gives additional reason to look for shorts in the two stocks that i mentioned earlier cases and super value so you may keep an eye on these stocks for potential short setups steel is another industry that decelerated and a potential short in ak steel may be developing and i already shared it in q site let's have a look at that post this was the q site post on the steel industry stock it should be steel s t w e l reasons to be cautious and protect profit in long position in this steel stock in the usa the stock was aks this is aks using weekly and daily charts in the weekly it came a long way from the bottom but at the right edge it was precisely at the memory resistance line at the same time in daily chart it was also at the memory resistance line earlier there was a big gap big gap and from where price drop probably because of earnings disappointment and this up move had filled the gap however at the right edge it was at multiple memory resistance lines weekly and daily and at the top of the gap so that may result in additional sellers to come in and push price lower we are always careful about holding long position if it is nearing memory resistance lines and in this case it has already gone up significantly that's why i mentioned that it may be wiser to either book profit or at least put stop using q protection signal in ak steel the stock has not been able to move up since this post was shared i mentioned about warning signs in consumer discretionary sector this is the third week now for two weeks i had mentioned that based on q industry rotation analysis and this week four consumer discretionary industries decelerated as a sector consumer discretionary turned negative these consumer discretionary industries are household appliances tires and rubber broadcasting and department stores so you may be cautious if you are holding long positions in these industries agricultural and farm machinery is an interesting industry because it was strong for many months but now it decelerated i saw two stocks john deere de and titan international twi they are both in uptrend however both are showing technical weakness in q charts twi is also fundamentally overvalued as i saw from q vital therefore it may be worth to protect profit with stop orders at least there is no short signal but if you are holding long position it may be good to be cautious let's look at these two stock charts john deere clearly bullish 
going straight up in the weekly chart. However, in the daily chart, why I mentioned that it may be good to exercise caution is because of the very headwind signal and the industry also decelerated. So it will be good to protect profit using Q protection signal. There is no need to short anything. There is no short signal yet. But one may be cautious about holding any long position. The other stock was TWI. Let me change the weekly template so I can see the watermark resistance levels. TWI is also going up strongly in the weekly chart. In daily it is in uptrend with higher lows and higher highs. However, it is at watermark resistance. Double top or you might even say triple top. There may still be some selling left. That's why I said that if you are holding long position, you may be cautious. Again, especially because the industry decelerated. No need to probably exit the trade, but you may put trailing stop using Q protection signal. I wanted to share a trade example where using fine tune chart, I could precisely take a short trade. The trade was actually based on an insight that was shared in Q site forum that was on MasterCard. Okay, this example on MasterCard was shared in Q example forum, not in Q site forum. This overvalued commerce enabling company had a bearish reversal signal in weekly. It was posted on December 19th. The post was based on the industry analysis where the heat map showed that it was strong earlier but it was weakening. Over one day period it had turned magenta and the deceleration columns, the pace columns over five days, two days and one day all were magenta. That showed that MasterCard's industry that is the data processing and outsourced services industry was rapidly declining in score. I had drilled down to the stocks or I could do a PR comparison of MasterCard. In this case, I did an industry PR comparison of MasterCard and instantly using color coding, you can see that MasterCard was overvalued both in terms of relative valuation and internal valuation. At that time, weekly had multiple bearish headwind signals that was a potential reversal signal and the weekly candle at the right edge had turned magenta, bearish. Daily declined a little bit, tried to go up and then dipped again at the right edge. Based on that, I had suggested that we might look for possible short opportunities. Then I was keeping an eye on MasterCard. In the daily chart, I was watching the stock closely. On Thursday, I saw that it tried to go up and then came down, creating a doji candle that opened and closed at almost the same price. Remember the initial post was shared around this candle and since then price couldn't go up. Then on Friday again I saw that price was trying to go up. So I decided to switch to fine tune template to take a very precise short trade. How did I do that? I first located the high of Thursday I drew a line at this price point and then changed my template to real time fine tune template using 5 minute charts. This is the real time fine tune chart. This was the line I drew using the daily chart. 
so what I was looking for was for price to go up above this resistance level and come back down again creating a false upside breakout and in this case it coincided with a bear release signal star signal this is the five minute chart so I could take a shot right at this point put stop just above days high and book profit once the risk distance was covered at least partial profit could be booked enough profit could be booked at this point and stop could be left at original stop to make sure that the trade is risk free from that time onward I actually took it using a put option for short term trading this was intended to be a fast day trade it is useful to take the trade using weekly options as it was Friday I didn't want to take that week's option so I took weekly option ending next week and let me show how the trade worked out this is a snapshot of the trade station brokerage platform we have the QL it add on for that I took a shot as price tried to go above this resistance line reversed displaying a bear release signal and candle color turning yellow so I shorted somewhere at this time using MasterCard next week's put option 152.5 strike that was slightly out of the money so I shorted around this point or maybe slightly in the money just at the money then as price came to this support line which is previous days close I already had about 35 percent profit that is enough profit for a quick day trade and you can see my profit distance was more than the risk distance so I decided to book profit at that point in this case I could be ready for the stock also because of the industry analysis and the fundamental weakness of MasterCard in terms of valuation let's summarize over this year 2017 stock market has gone up strongly if we look at sector rotation table we see that over 12 month period nine sectors went up only two went down however as we move closer to the end of the year we see that over past week there is balance six sectors went up five went down and look at Friday no sector went up ten sectors went down so though the yearly performance is great gradually we can see sector breadth is weakening is the same true from industry analysis over one year period 137 industries went up 36 went down in the middle the breadth actually strengthened 145 went up 150 went up this was the best breadth 150 went up 23 went down since then it is gradually declining over five days bread turned negative 75 went up 98 went down and over one day Friday it turned more negative 21 only went up 152 went down so we see that sector and industry bread is deteriorating steadily this is happening not only in the USA market we also share industry rotation insight on India and I see similar decline in industry breadth in India as well on top of that there are bearish headwind signs in multiple broad market ETFs and also on NASDAQ broad market indices that tells that it may not be the time to keep adding new long positions indiscriminately 
Instead, we use the 360 degree analysis to locate industries that were weak earlier and now strengthening, like the real estate industries I discussed earlier and also some utilities industries. Locate fundamentally strong stocks in them and look for low risk buy points on technical charts. What to do about the industries that were strong earlier but weakening now? For example, the infotech industries, many of them were cyan earlier but turning magenta now. If the individual stocks are still going up, it is not required to exit but a stop may be placed, protect profit stop so that profit doesn't erode. And as we see, most of the information technology industries are weakening. So we may even look for potential short trades. So from being a very bullish market for the last one year of 2017, nearing the year end, some weaknesses are appearing in sectors, industries, as well as individual stocks. It may be time to be cautious and protect your profit. That is all that I plan to share in today's session. Thanks a lot for attending. I look forward to seeing you in our next session in the new year. Have a great weekend. Happy new year and trade profitably.